Do you want to start collecting emails for your business, but you're not quite sure how to get started? Coming up, I'm going to walk you through a bunch of examples, both good and bad, of how you can start building your email list. So you're starting to grow your business online. Your website's up, you're growing a social media following, but you don't have an email list yet. If you're not quite sure why this is so important, I'd encourage you to watch our last video up above here. But basically the point is, is someone visits your website once, they might forget about you, your name, not ever be able to find you again. And so they're not gonna scroll through days and weeks of their browser history to come across your website again. So while they're on your website, it's important to be collecting their emails. That way you can stay in touch with them, tell them more about you, your business, new products, new offerings, everything else, and eventually turn them from a first time website visitor into a loyal customer. So before you get started collecting emails, you need to choose an email marketing software. So we recommend using ConvertKit, which we use for our business and we recommend for our clients. Also MailChimp is great because you can get started for free. AWeber is another good option, but basically you want to sign up for an email marketing software first, and then that's where you're actually going to save the emails that you collect for your email list and then start sending out emails from there. So there's three main ways that I want to talk about collecting emails today. The first way would be adding a form to your website. So either the website builder that you use, if it's Squarespace, Wix, Weebly, um, have forms to collect emails. Also the email marketing software you chose probably has forms that you can design within the email marketing software then insert it on your website. Um, you might add that to the footer, the header, within your blogs and your homepage. Um, the next way to collect emails is through pop-ups or what are sometimes called hello bars. So it's a bar along the bottom or the top that's basically there the whole time while you're scrolling through a website. A lot of times people use either Optin Monster, Sumo Me, or Hello Bar to collect emails that way. I'll link to those services down below as well. The third way to collect email addresses is through landing pages. And what are landing pages? If you're not familiar, you can check out the video we did on them up above. Um, but it's basically a one-page website designed to get email addresses. And so it's not like your homepage that has a blog about uh, social media, everything else. It's just one page that describes a certain offer. And someone decides, do I want this offer or not? And so this is generally used by you giving something away in exchange for someone's email address. And so this could be an ebook, a webinar, a class, a checklist, something that you want to give away that would be valuable for your audience, and they're going to give up their email address. It's a really powerful tool and a lot of times people use landing page software such as Instapage or Leadpage to build these because it's really easy and quick to do. You can A-B test it, figure out what works, what really converts and how you can collect a lot of email addresses. Now that we've gone over a couple of different tools that you can use to start collecting email addresses, I thought it might be helpful to show you some examples of websites, both good and bad, of how they're collecting emails and hopefully it'll give you some ideas on what you can start to put to work to grow your email list. Well, I thought the best place to start is maybe some poor options of places that aren't asking for email addresses, or aren't doing a very good job of it, and then gradually get into websites that do a really good job of collecting emails. So there's two different areas that I'm gonna take a look at today. Um, one are some e-commerce sites that do a good and bad job of collecting email addresses, and then also I'm taking a look at a couple of different authors. And so I thought these were kind of very different examples, but hopefully give you some ideas on how to collect emails. And so starting out with a bad option would be Jim Collins. So if you take a look at his website, um, he has a bunch of really amazing books, um, but I'm really not seeing anywhere of how do I give him my email address. Um, you know, actually I was looking at this before and there's things where he's gonna give away his PDFs and aren't asking for an email. And so this is something that you'll see on other pages are gonna collect your email address, then give you the PDF. So Stephen King is another author who I was on their website recently and is not doing a very good job. Let's check it out. And so on their website, I don't see library, author, news, future works. And so it was actually like down here somewhere in newsletter. So if you see that little thing in the footer, here you can sign up to his newsletter. But that was that's really it. That's the only place I could find to give my email address to Stephen King on his website. So we looked at a couple of bad author websites. Why don't we take a look at some e-commerce ones? Um, start out with some of the bad ones and I'll work our way up to some better ones. So Men's Warehouse was one of the ones that wasn't so great. So style advice, learn more, snow day clearance, and then 
down here in the footer, you can either sign up with your email or your phone number. And so there was no pop-ups, nothing else. I can spend some time on their website. And that was the only place that I saw. So I guess if you're, so if you're a customer of Men's Warehouse, you might get emails from them after purchasing, but they're probably not getting a whole lot of email signups just with the signup where it is on their website right now. So let's take a look at a couple better options. So a little bit better than this was Brooks Brothers. So you can see there's a pop-up right when you go on their website. Sign up to their email address for exclusive offers, special events, and the latest news. Um, enter your email address here. You can sign up in the footer with your email address as well. So the problem with these options that we've seen so far is there's nothing really incentivizing you at all to sign up for the email list. So let's take a look at some better options. So Nice Laundry is a men's clothing brand that makes socks and underwear and basics, essentially. Um, let's take a look at their website. And so one of the things here is, you know, sign up for their email address, their newsletter, and get a free pair of socks. So sign up, get my free pair. And then as you're exiting the web page, you'll see no matter if you saw that offer or not, or what page you're on, but as long as you're starting to exit the page, this pop-up is gonna come up saying, here's your free offer, sign up and get a free pair of socks. So one, it's in the footer at the bottom where you might expect it to be, plus as you're leaving, they're making an offer to you. Well, let's go back and take a look at some authors that actually have better websites. And to start it off, let's check out Dan Pink's website. And so with his, there's a couple of things. One is the subscribe is up here at the top, so it's more prominent than having to go all the way down to the footer. Although if I remember right, I don't think it's anywhere down at the bottom. So this is essentially the only place that you can sign up and there's no kind of exit intent pop-up either. Um, but when you do go, oh, here you go. There was a sign up thing right there. Um, but here he's giving a lot of the value. And so I think that's the other thing that's really important of People are going to be worried that you're going to give their email address away, you're going to spam them, but here they're basically telling you, one is, look at how many people have subscribed to this already, there's 150,000 people. Um, um, three things that have caught Dan's attention recently, plus his pink cast of 90 second videos. And so you kind of have an idea of what you're going to get if you sign up for his newsletter. So the next, not author, but website of a book that I want to show you was Principles by Ray Dalio. And so here's his website for the book. Um, the first thing is, here's this bar at the top that pops up that says Get Updates. So you're going to see that either get his book, follow him on social media, or Get Updates. And if you click this, it's going to take you down to the footer where you can sign up for his email list. The other thing I really liked from the page that, that we didn't see from the previous authors is that he's giving away something for free which i think is a great way to collect emails so you're here on the website for principles and you want to download the book big debt crises and he's saying look you can buy the ebook or printed edition on amazon or actually i'll give it to you for free if you want just a pdf and so giving away something free to collect an email is probably you know much more attractive to someone than here just take my email and i don't know what you're going to be sending me so another industry that you'd probably expect to be good at gathering emails would be the marketing industry. So I wanted to show you a couple examples from there um, to give you some great ideas of how to collect emails. So the first one was HubSpot. So why don't, if we look for a lot of topics, they're gonna show up in SEO, which I think they do a phenomenal job with, but if we look for video marketing guide, um, you're gonna see here the ultimate guide to video marketing. So it's showing up on SEO, which is great, um, come to the page and here's the ultimate guide to video marketing. The first thing you're going to see is download now their video marketing starter pack. Um, also, as you're scrolling, you'll see the subscribe up above here. And then also, I think it thought that I was going to close the page. So this exit intent pop-up came up saying join 215,000 fellow marketers. Again, kind of showing the credibility that they have of obviously there's so many people signing up, you know, they're not spamming their email list. And so sign up, it's valuable, you're gonna to wanna to have this information. All right, so let's take a look in further detail of HubSpot's blog. And so you can see as you scroll down, they're asking you to subscribe in the little button here. 
along the side on the blog here. You can also subscribe via Slack or Messenger, um, also at the bottom of the page as well. And so if you take a look at some of their articles, how to create editorial calendar in Google Calendar, free templates. So let's check this out. And so as you're going through the article one, you know that they have templates, so that's one thing they're probably gonna ask for your email address for. Um, click to download a free editorial template calendar. Um, and then you can see they have a pop-up here doing the same thing. Let's actually click on it. So this is essentially a landing page. So it took me out of all the other distractions and said, this is what this is about. Do you want to sign up or not? And get your free templates now. Fill out this information. So this is essentially what a landing page looks like. You can see there's no social buttons about not other products. It's like, do you want the edit free editorial calendar templates or not? Um, give me your email address or close the tab. Another place that you'll see landing pages used quite a bit is with paid ads. So it could be an ad on YouTube, on Search, on Facebook. Someone has some type of offer. Hey, sign up, check out this webinar, download this ebook, whatever it is, and you're gonna get to a landing page. And so why don't I show you an example of that on YouTube? So if I look for a grow YouTube channel, and let's click on one of the videos. Daryl's how to grow your YouTube channel fast. Okay, and so this is from Sunny. Um, let's check out where this link takes us. All right, so here's a landing page from Sunny. So register now, register now. She's appeared in all these different media outlets. And so you can see here, this is not her homepage. This is really, you know, she wants to get you to register for her free online training. So if you were to take this away, Here's what our general homepage is. And so using landing pages is a great way to get someone to see an offer and want to sign up and give their email address. So to wrap up, we basically covered choosing an email marketing software, the three different ways for collecting emails, one, forms on your website, two, through pop-ups and hello bars, um, and three, through landing pages. Then we showed you examples both good and bad of how to collect emails on your website. Um, and then lastly showed you a few examples of landing pages um, and how they're used a lot for paid ads. Everything we talked about today, I'm gonna to include down in the description below from the websites we visited to the services that we recommend. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave that down in the comment section and I'll respond to you there. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you can do that up above here. And if you'd like to watch other related videos, there's a couple along the side here. Until next time, bye-bye.